Trade What You See with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. <clears throat> Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, boys and girls, get around the fireside. We're going to have a little bit of a uh, little, not of a poem, what they call the short story of, you remember Goldilocks and the Three Pigs? Well, this is London and the Flying Cow. Folks, this is what happened in London yesterday. You see, they had hurricane winds, and it took this cow up about uh, 70 feet in the air. He actually made it down okay. He had one broken leg, but he's doing okay. But I wanted to bring this to your attention because it has something that is just totally unbelievable. Let's go back to 1987, folks. On the 16th of uh, October in London, 1987, on the 16th of October, they had the first hurricane in about 40 years. Yesterday, folks, they had their second hurricane in 37 years. You don't know what have to happen after the October 16th of 1987. Now, let's walk through what Peter Elides was talking about. Now, this happened to be uh, let me get this up here, folks, because this is the one we want to talk about, is the one from the uh, 1929. The chances of this happening are almost nil, but the fact that it's following some of these things is really worth it. So let's take a look at this. What Peter was saying is, from the high that we made back on September the 3rd, 1929, we came down, and on 38 days, we started down big time. We already know that happened to be on February the 11th, if you remember that. And we've been down hard ever since. Then we had the full moon. That was last week. The market that was, you know, into that uh, move. That was on a Thursday. And, of course, we started down. We said that if this market is down on, uh, you know, Friday, chances are you're going to have a big move down. And, of course, we had a big move down. Now, if this is correct, this means that on day, 57, day 55, there are 56 and 55 are Fibonacci numbers. That comes in on March the 4th. There should be a major bottom on March the 4th if that can if that connects. But the thing is, it's got to start down either today or tomorrow. All we had today, folks, was nothing more than an absolute – I mean, we, we talked about this uh, – uh, the fact is, I sent things out about it. In fact, where we were, let's just get this up here. This is where we were here in the S&P last night. I did, oh, that's not the one I want to show you. That's a, that's the secret one. No, there's no secret one. Uh, well, I'll, I'm going to put Billy's up here because it's uh, Billy Vilton's got a really nice one here. Uh, he's a new trader, and he's trading the, the micros. And you can see here, there was the uh, the number in the S&P was at uh, 4250. That was an ABCD pattern. It was also one standard deviation down, you know, just pretty much exactly uh, as you see about it in the books. I'll bring it up here so you can see it again, the way that we drew it last night. And stop and think, folks. What was happening in the world was they were talking about World War III on CNN. They were talking about World War IV on Fox. And on CNBC, they were showing a uh, rerun of uh, Chuck Norris's uh, uh, tra tra uh, tra training plan. I can't remember what they call that thing whatever that trading training um, facility is. Anyway, there's the ABCD. It was one standard deviation down. And folks, stop and think how bearish it was, folks. We had so much going on there uh, that it was really quite amazing that the fact the market was only down that much. It was only down about 90 handles with all that bad news. And boy, when you see when you see good action and bad news, you better pay attention to that. And that's what we had happen. Now, how bad was the news? Nah, not bad news. Let me go to take you to bad news, boys and girls. I tried to get Arch on the phone, Arch Crawford, uh, today, but he was rather busy. Toto Jim, that's what it is. Thank you very much, young man. Someone's always got my back here. Appreciate that, Mr. Shane, who will be our guest at the half hour. This is September the 11th. This is a weekly chart of uh, – what happened on September 11th. Now, you can see uh, the big down move there on September the 11th. Okay, now, on that day, on September the 11th, the planes came in. It was around 5.30, 5.45 in the morning, I believe. I think I put the time in there, too. 
No, I didn't put the time. It was around 5.45 because I was chatting with Arch Crawford on the phone after the first plane had been hit. At that time, before the second plane had been hit, Arch had told me that the uh, the Pentagon had been hit. And I had that, that didn't even come out for about 15 minutes or more. Anyway, you can see they stopped trading there, and you can see the market was uh, down. Uh, this was the last day. You don't see that's a weekly. It was still up. It was down on the day, but up on the week. It was down about, oh, this was when we were trading big handles, and it was down about, uh, I don't know, four, four or five points when the news hit, and I, I was so upset with it. I just, I, I, and I was short. I had a couple shorts on, and I, I just took the shorts off. I just didn't want to get involved because it was so emotional. But when you stop and think, what we were watching there for a period of several months afterwards was an attack you know right down basically right in the middle of manhattan uh and you know it's just incredible and, and people actually on the tv they actually compared that to what happened on 9 11 i almost picked up the phone and called them i, I was very upset about that there was nothing i mean there were it was four or five people died you know people that we don't even know we knew people that died or many people did that died in that in that thing, terrible thing where 2,800 people, five people have died in the Ukraine so far. But that's how the news, what the news does, they anesthetize you with f fake stuff. I don't care which one it is, they're all the same. They really are. I mean, one's a little more radical than the other, but they're all pretty much the same. There was there was nothing that could compare with that happened other than Pearl Harbor, and uh, you know that was uh, you know the start of World War II. And, uh, of course, what went on from there, the market did not make a low, folks, until October of the next year when we made that big three drive to a bottom pattern. So what we saw last night, I know it was in the news a lot and everybody was talking about it. But frankly, boys and girls, when it comes down to paying tiddlywinks, it ain't worth diddly squat. I'll tell you that right now. The only thing I'm saying is how can there be a flying cow on the same day that we had in 1987? That's worth paying attention to, uh, if nothing else. So we'll we'll cover some of these other things that we need to cover that I think are, are pretty nice. You'll be able to see here's the uh, here was the NASDAQ. We were making a beautiful A. B, C, D, and the NASDAQ down there at a 1.618 expansion, expansion, and it, it's rallied a great deal uh, from that level, but whether we continue on or not. This thing in, in the uh, that's going on over there is not going to be uh, gone for a while for two reasons. One, they, knew, they need some new cannon fodder for the news, and second reason, they love to draw these things out with extended... Uh, meetings and all that other stuff so very very important to uh, keep in mind that that's it now let's go back to look at that s p again because where we are here was here was our game plan here folks the game plan was we sold on the 36th day remember we had three fibonacci numbers up there that uh, this is the cash but the the, the futures were trading at uh, 4585 and we said that we should, if we can, we're going to try to hold it out to day 55, which would be the fourth. That's 55 days from the high on September. Now, whether that's going to happen or not, who knows? But she does a trade, if you remember. 877-927-6648. Stay tuned. Some information from the U.K. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right. 
information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I'm going to put something into the room you're not going to believe, okay? This is hard to believe. You won't believe what this today in China. The day is, uh, we'll put this in here. You're going to be able to see it. It's 2020-22-2022. I mean, if you like Gartley 222, you have to like it today. I Is Mike still on the line? Uh, good. I'll, I'll take care of Mike tomorrow. I forgot to uh, do his charts. I feel I, I, he's a very dear friend, and I forgot to put his charts up. For, I'll do those charts for tomorrow. He wanted to look at uh, UGA and XCP. But look at that. This is that's just incredible. 2020, 22, 2022. Very, very interesting. Okay, now let's move over and uh, take care of a couple other things that we need to look at. Folks, here is a chart that uh, you'll be able to see. Uh, you won't know what it is because I've never traded. I didn't even know they had futures for this. This is the futures contract for nickel. This is very, very important. This is the positive node and the batteries that we do, uh, a, you know, positive and negative. You'll see the double, a triple, uh, three drive to a top pattern up there at uh, roughly uh, almost uh, 1850 in nickel. So there should be a top coming in nickel pretty good. The reason why that, boy, the F-16s are out today, holy cow, I don't know if you folks can hear that, but there's a bunch of them out there doing maneuvers here today. Uh, holy cow, I hope they don't call up my SEAL team unit. Shouldn't even joke about that because I'm not a SEAL team. Uh, well, I'm a, uh, I was a, I would have been a cook in the Army or a pharmacy technician or something. There's no way I'm going to be a fighter. Anyway, uh, we'll take a look at that. But you'll see that's a possibility in nickel. I don't trade nickel, never have. I didn't know there were nickel futures, but that was brought to my attention. The fact that one of the larger nickel producers is the Soviet Union, along with a whole, whole lot of other things. Now, I posted the charts. Uh, for the FTSE and also for the DAX, you can see they stopped exactly at ABCD patterns. Again, also, you know, very, very helpful when you remind yourself that that ABCD pattern uh, is pretty good. And speaking of ABCD patterns, here is one that was happening last night in the heat of the battle. I had to go look at the half hour chart 
on the gold. And as you can see here, this is the same pattern that we've seen over and over again. It's a three drive to a top pattern. The distance between the first top and the second top is equal to the third top. It's a perfect price analysis up there at the 127, 1.618, coming in at 916. The high was 918. We broke all the way down to 1882 and then back up to 1808 and then back down to 1890. So there might be some type of a topping action forming in the uh, in the gold. So that's it's still a little bit early. Same thing with the crude oil market. Uh, we had a big move in crude oil. And those of you that are going to be subscribing to the uh, daily thing that we're going to do, our day trading thing that's going to be probably on uh, March the, uh, the 16th, uh, I'm hoping that that's going to be the day that we can do it on. You'll be, you'll be looking at charts that uh, give you a pretty good idea of, uh, you know, where to try to you know, put your orders in. And I wanted to show you one here that was, uh, well, there were two here that were really interesting last night. And I can't find the first one. I've already found the second one. I can't find the first one where it is. Uh, holy moly. Oh, well, here's, here's the one. This is the one from Intel that someone asked me about. We talked about this 382 pattern in Intel. And there you can see it right there. So that's it. Here's the second one that I thought was relatively important because we were watching this thing all night, uh, Sunday night and also Monday. And here's what you were looking at here. If you would take a look at the E-mini S&P, if you believe in this kind of stuff with numbers, and I certainly do, you can see the first 382 retracement. You can see the second 382 retracement. And you can see the third 382 retracement. So that's what we were looking at. And, of course, as you know, uh, it, uh, it worked out relatively well. Now, if we take a look at uh, one other one that I think is uh, uh, relatively important, and that is the, uh, the crude oil. And I'll be darned if I can't find the darn thing right now. Oh, where is it? Ah, oh, God. No, I, I give up. <laughs> I actually give up. Uh, that was, I, I had a beautiful one in crude oil today, folks. Just absolutely spot on at the 382 retracement. But uh, we'll do these uh, as we go through. Now, let's talk just a little bit. When these markets are really wild, people have asked me, what do I do? Folks, when they're real crazy, I go back to the basics. I go back to what gets me to the dance, okay? And I Try to dance with the same girl that I took the dance to the dance. You see the first rally up in this market right here? You see that first rally? I'm not even going to tell you what it was. Then you see the second rally exactly equal to the first rally with a perfect ABCD. Well, it happened to be the Dow Jones on its way to a lot lower prices, folks. So that was that's where it was coming in Sunday night. We had a beautiful ABCD there, and then the market started to fade you know, quite a bit. So those are just a few of the ones that we're paying, you know, really close attention to. But you have to, when you get to that area where you're, uh, you know, the, the volatility gets really super great, what you have to do is you've got to, you know, narrow your time frame down so that you can get into a risk parameter that, that works. And believe me, these, these, these patterns work well on two-minute charts, 30-second charts, tick charts. doesn't make any difference. All you got to do is find the one that you're comfortable with and do that one. That's really all you have to do. I mean, there's there's no nothing nothing harder to do than that. That's uh, that's the bottom line. So, remind ourselves that you know this is trading is simple, but it's not easy, as Mark Douglas said. But that's what I'll do. I'll go down to a this happened to be an eight minute chart, and I I didn't do three minute or two minute or five minute. I did eight minutes, and the reason why I could get more data so that I could show you the relationships between those patterns. And they're, they were there everywhere. If you just keep an eye on these, you'll be able to see that they're pretty much uh, right in the ballpark if you, uh, if you start to look for them. And if you find them on the smaller time frame, you're going to find them on the larger time frame. That's the bottom line. It just takes a little bit of work and a little bit of patience. But if you do that, you can certainly, uh, you know, make a living at this. That floor trader's handbook, folks, I hate to give you a sales pitch on it, but that's the best work, best book published under my name ever. And I thought that the Trade What You See book was the best, but I think this one may be slightly better because it does two things. It empirically proves that the ABCD pattern is what Mandelbrot said it was, the seed pattern where everything starts. 
And the second reason is it narrows your risk down to just about as close as you can get to nothing as you can get. Because when these patterns fail, they're going on to the next level and you got to get out of the way. But the odds are in your favor better than 65% of the time. And the payoff is better than three to one, for heaven's sakes. You don't have to be a rocket scientist or an MIT mathematician to realize those are flat out really good odds. And you certainly want to be able to uh, to be able to do that. Now, I wanted to bring this last chart up. This is the cash S&P showing what we think might happen. Now, you notice here that we've counted the 36 days up until the 12th of February. The 4th of March coming in 10 days from now is where it should bottom at 55 days. If that's the case, that would be following exactly what happened in 1929 and also in 1987. You know, any move, if we if we if go up, well, we'll, take, we'll be back with Shane Smolian, folks. He's got a great show for us today, so stay tuned. Shane Smolian, TheWolfTrader.com. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, we'll be back right now with Shane Smolian, WolfTrader.com. And Shane, I have a Ripley's Believe It or Not question that just came in. Okay. And that is, why couldn't they find a flying pig instead of a flying cow, with the cow being bullish and the pig being bearish? I don't know the answer to that question. So let's okay. see what you have today, my friend. Mr. Volatility right. himself, Shane Smolian. Go right ahead. Well, happy Tuesday to everybody. This is a shortened week here with the holiday. Uh, but yeah, today's right. theme, today's <laughs> yeah, shortened, shortened but intense, right? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, we had the hours. most intense uh, Sunday or Sunday and Monday Presence Day in a while. Um, okay, so today's theme is going to be moving into the future. Uh, I'm going to talk about the S and P gold and Bitcoin, but I want to talk about the concept of the future and the bridge between the past and the future. So here's here's my quote of the day today, which is: History may rhyme, but the past does not equal the future. To successfully move into the future, we must often let go of the past and pay attention to what is happening right now. And I think that quote really summarizes the world right now. Uh, everything from the Fed to Bitcoin to what's going on with the electric vehicles, things are changing in the world. So we really need to pay attention to, to what's going on uh, to understand these markets. I mean, that's what we all want to do. We want to understand what's going on and sometimes just looking at things – the old way is not going to get us to where we want to go. So uh, this is the big picture on the S&P. So, you know, this is my, my overall picture talking about the history. So at one time, uh, price, wave counts, cycles, and astro were all very good technical tools to forecast the S&P. Uh, but this is no longer the case. Since 2009, the markets have changed forever with the arrival of the Fed juice. And the modern Fed is not comparable to the past Fed. Uh, the analytical mind has trouble coming to terms with this, but we can no longer look at the S&P through the lens of the past to understand the future. So this is kind of my central thesis with the Fed. Uh, so the S&P status right now, I think the best asset class is is either short S&P or cash. And again, I would tell people, uh, don't, don't be so down on cash. It's not a bad idea if you're not sure. And shorting the S&P is tough, particularly in bear markets. And you know, if inflation is six or seven percent, that's better than losing thirty or forty percent. If the S and P uh, really goes down here, uh, S and P. And by the way, we're at the end of a big run, so you've had. You know, this this is not a bad time to to go to cash because you've had a very nice run on the S and P. Uh, the S and P is coming off a planetary stellium high. It's starting to fall now. The Fed internals are collapsing, and we have a classical fear trade going on uh, towards gold and bonds uh, away from the S and P, and then the double. Lunars down and the Fed internals are, are collapsing here. So the fear index is down to, to 36, but I don't think this is going to matter as much now because uh, once the liquidity dries up with the Fed and the Fed juice falling and the QE ending, I think it, it could stay low for a long time because there's just simply not going to be enough liquidity there. This is the timeline of the Fed in terms of the taper. Uh, we're now down to 25% of the original taper. So uh, we're getting near, near – the final countdown here, and then they're going to start raising rates, and they will do it uh, e at least early. If, even if they don't continue for months and months and months, there is likely a rate hike coming. Uh, so this is more liquidity being taken out of the system. Definitely not good for the S and P going forward. So again, to me, this is really the central focus right now in terms of if you want to understand what's the S and P. I think this is really a big one. But we do like to look into the past too, uh, as you, you talk about with 1987. We don't want to ignore the past. Uh, this was the stelium that we saw in 1987, and then, of course, the S&P falls very sharply uh, after that. And I, and I did a webinar on this, and we can go back and talk about that. I, on, the, on your show, Larry, we did talk about this. But right now, we, did, we just came off of a stelium on 213, 29 to 213, where we had a tight stelium planets. And uh, the S&P did, in fact, peak on this stelium. Uh, so you can see here, this is this letter D here on the chart. This is where that stelium was. It was actually two two nine to two thirteen. So it runs up here. This is the letter D. This was the top of the stelium here that we just saw, and now we're heading back down again. Uh, and so because you have a weak Fed on top of the weak Astro, I think this really makes for a market that's vulnerable uh, to more selling right now. And then of course the liquidity is drying up. Uh, the liquidity and there's something called the liquidity index, which is completely drying up. Uh, and so when the Astro piles on top of the Fed, this is one of the rare chances that you have for the S&P to show some continued selling here. So um, all you need for the S&P to decline is is a weak Fed. And that's that's what we're getting right now. 
Uh, even if you go back to last December, uh, this this it, this coincided with our December rally, which also coincided with this positive seasonals. But again, it followed the stelium peaks here. So, uh, you know, we're coming off one of those peaks now. Here's the interesting thing. The difference between 1987 and now is that we actually are coming off a series of we're going to have four different peaks here on this stelium. There's four of them coming up. Uh, we just passed the second one on 2.9 here. And uh, on there's more peaks coming. So between now and May, uh, there there are a few more peaks coming on this stelium. So what, what would happen is once these peaks start to come in, those could be temporary pauses in the rally or short term. I'm sorry, in the decline, short uh, pauses in the decline or short term rallies. But ultimately, uh, I think this is going to just serve to slow down the inevitable, which is a sinking S and P 500. Uh, and so. You know, I, I still look at the Astro. I still think it's important, but we got to put it in the context of what's going on with the Fed. Now, this is a picture of, of the S&P versus the Fed internals. Uh, we're seeing something here that is ultra rare, guys. I want to point this out. This is super rare for the, this to happen. What's happening is that uh, you can't see it here, but the Fed internals have been in a, in a decline since July the 6th. Uh, but what's happening on the short term is the Fed is trying to push this up and the market is rejecting it and going lower. And so what this means is that you have a rare negative divergence going on between the S&P and the Fed. Larry, I can't tell you how rare this is. I've only seen this on a, a handful of times. And every time this has happened, the S&P has swiftly sold off. So we are at risk here in terms of the market is basically saying – you know, I'm going to head lower in spite of what the Fed is trying to do. And if the Fed turns even a little bit down here at this point, it, it could cause the S&P to have a larger acceleration to the downside here. So so this is really at the core of understanding what's going on with the markets uh, in this modern era. And this is why I talk about the future. This is this is if you want to understand the S&P, this is this is how you understand it. And this is why we study the Fed all of the time. Now, we do have Astro to look at, too. Like I'll look at the double lunar cycle here. Double lunar cycle is in a cell since uh, February the 2nd. And yes, this is still saying that the Astro uh, agrees that we are headed down for some time now. Uh, this this will likely stay into a cell through the end of March. Uh, and it could extend all it could extend through March. And like you said, into that early March period, uh, I, I would agree with Peter that that is a, a period to watch in early March. We got to be really careful in there. Uh, especially with this liquidity drying up, because that's when you get the volatility. When you don't, you know, when when you don't have as many traders in there, you get these huge swings in price. So uh, it, it's a dangerous time for sure. Yeah. Shane, we have a caller from the UK. Um, uh, Moz is calling in. Moz, uh, you want to ask uh, Shane your question, please? Uh, yes, Larry. Um, uh, hi, Shane. This is Moz from uh, United Kingdom. Um, Hello. I really like your work. Um, I've been following your work uh, for a number of years. Um, Especially after when you know we started with the pandemic, uh, it's been really good, spot on. Um, I just want to know if you also do some lunar work, or maybe you also look at Fed internals impacting hard assets like real estate. Uh, I'll answer that when we get back. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Moz, for calling in. I hope to see you in London, buddy. See you soon. All right. Bye bye. We'll be back, folks, with Shane Smolly and WolfTrader.com. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at tfnn.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks, with Shane Smolian, WolfTrader.com. You want to go ahead, young man? Sure. Uh, just to answer the question of the gentleman who called in, so the, the part of the Fed internals you should be watching is the reduction of, of uh, mortgage-backed security purchases from the Fed. That will have a negative effect on real estate. Okay, we do do the lunar cycle. The double lunar cycle is, is one of the biggest uh, astro indicators we track. But this one here is the general combined transits. We're at a peak right now. It's falling again, and it falls through the beginning of March. Be careful on that. We also have the hottest cycle here, uh, which tracks the S&P on a long term. This is on the decline, too. So no matter how you look at this, the S&P is, is really in a period now of where it's vulnerable. Uh, now, gold. Uh, so some thoughts on gold. Just like the Fed has forever changed the S&P since 2009 with the Fed juice, Bitcoin has forever changed gold. With the arrival of digital currency, we can no longer look at gold through the lens of the past to understand the future. The world is rapidly changing, and we must adapt to be successful. So that's kind of my thesis on gold. It's 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 changed, just forever changed. It's not like it was before. So we can't look at it like we, we did before. Uh, gold has shown a modest rally since the post-COVID inflation began, but clearly this is disappointing compared to other commodities. This is supposed to be the great inflation hedge, and it has barely gone up. Uh, so Bitcoin has likely stolen some of the uh, the share and the stored value concept. Uh, and the hottest cycle suggests we do have another month higher on gold. Uh, and there's a fear play in effect right now. And I have a few comparisons here. If you look at the one-year change here, uh, gold is really not even that high on this list. Oil is all the way at the top. Bitcoin is below gold here. Uh, this is a year, a one-year change. So gold's up about 4.4%. Bitcoin is down big this year it's down 29 percent but if you look at two years um bitcoin's up 294 percent gold's only up 11 percent and if you look at three years um bitcoin's up bitcoin is up 862 percent where gold's only up 29 percent so i think you know gold has been pretty steady here it's been it's been increasing kind of steadily each year but not like we would expect so something's going on and that's that's the only thing i'm saying is we need to pay attention to what's going on there now, if we look at gold here on the daily chart, uh, the Fed juice is still in a buy. The Fed juice goes into a buy on February the 8th. The double lunar cycle goes into a buy on February the 10th. Uh, so the Fed juice is still in a buy. The solar cycle is approaching some type of a, of a near-term high into here. Uh, but if we look at the hottest cycle, which looks at more than just the solar cycle, um, th this, this does suggest that gold could be heading higher now for – Maybe maybe another three weeks or so uh, in terms of gold. But the, the, the thing I want to emphasize is that 
gold should have doubled or tripled during the COVID inflation period, and it didn't. So, you know, while we are experiencing a rally right now, and it is trying to break out in this fear trade, I, I, I think when we're talking about the long term, um, I, I think we need to be a little concerned about it because, like I said, if this was really this great inflation hedge, if we go back here and look at this three year, I mean, look at look at uh, look at where copper is. I mean, copper's copper is for, is, uh, is up forty nine percent versus gold. Now that's another thing to think about. What what is copper now? Copper is copper the new oil because of the cars, like you were talking about nickel. I mean, so we got to think about the future here when we're talking about this. So just looking at gold as we did in the past, it may not be the best best way to serve to serve us into the future here. All right. So uh, what about Bitcoin? Well, uh, Bitcoin has forever changed the landscape of money and currency. So this is no doubt true. What, however you feel about it. It has changed everything. It, now, it epitomizes the Iranian concept of decentralized power. I've done a series of webinars about this, talking about how this whole Iranian vibration, everything now is about decentralization of power. It's the internet, it's people, it's all these independent channels that are coming up on, on the internet and the YouTube channels. The independent media is is on the rise, and, th and this, is, this is not going away. Uh, it's going to continue to increase. And so Bitcoin really is at the core of this concept or the core of this thinking. And so this is really, I think, leading us into the future here in some some shape or form. I mean, even the concept of the blockchain is an incredible concept. And I think it I think it will be uh, spun off into other technologies, too. I mean, uh, if you really want to track something accurately in the future, uh, you, you you use blockchain. I mean, that's the best way to do it. So I, I just think that this is a concept that is great. But I think that Bitcoin this year will likely decline with all asset classes. Uh, now, not, now, I think the S&P is in trouble. I think a lot of these markets, we could start to see deflationary forces come in. And I think Bitcoin is not is not immune to that in the, in the short term. I think Bitcoin probably will fall uh, with the rest of these asset classes. But the question you need to ask yourself is, where will Bitcoin be in five years and in 10 years? And that's a totally different question because, you know, Bitcoin could come out of this stronger than anything else. I mean, if they all fall for a year or so, but then at the end, Bitcoin is the one that comes out. That's what that's what we need to be looking right now. Um, so Bitcoin uh, has been modeling very well. We caught that nice sell off. There, there was an immediate reaction to the gold spike. So Bitcoin dropped recently. Uh, to the gold spike, uh, but um, it's still got a, a little bit of positive astro on it for about two to three weeks here. So, um, you know, it still could try to to try to hang on here for a few more weeks, uh, uh, but we may continue to see a de the depression this year along with equity. So again, I want to point that out that uh, it's not impervious to equities, and and Bitcoin has become more and more linked to equities for whatever reason. It didn't used to be, but now it's kind of linked to it. Uh, correlates to it. So uh, I think the real question, though, is what happens in, in the long term future. If you look at the fear and greed index on this, uh, we're, we're at a period of extreme fear right now in Bitcoin. It's down to 25. Um, so, um, you know, that that is that is a reading that's that's getting pretty low there. Uh, but uh, if we look at Bitcoin in terms of the hottest cycle, um, Bitcoin still has a little bit of run up here to go uh, before it, it, it turns back down again here. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if if Bitcoin, um, you know, tries to to hang on here for a few weeks. This is this is the chart here showing the the Fed juice here. The Fed juice did turn down on 217 along with the double lunar, but there is a low coming in here on 223 on the double lunar cycle here. You can see this right here. So I think it it might have a chance here to try to hang on for a few more weeks, uh, and then the question is what happens after that? You know, does Bitcoin? Uh, succumb to the pressure with equities if equities fall uh, and then again we, when we look forward you know a year or two years ahead the question is where will Bitcoin be from there and I think I think there's a good chance it's going to be it's going to be better off well wow, it's very interesting I heard a comment uh, from somebody on Bloomberg that the uh, blockchains and uh, cryptos were going to replace the stock market there won't be stock shares anymore there'll be uh, you know, these bitcoins and related to stocks. I don't know how that would work, but uh, he made a very uh, in interesting case for it, which I understood about three percent of it, and the rest of it was way over my head. <laughs> Shane, well, there, we have a 
Sure, we have a question ahead. for one of our listeners. Uh, uh, what do you see uh, for a uh, far as the length of this retracement that we're seeing so far that started on January 4th? This comes from Jeff in Connecticut. What what do you how far how long? I know it's a tough question, but how long do you think this bull trend or various correction will, will take? Well, I'm going to do a webinar on this for for crypto subscribers. I'm still gathering the data on this, but I think we could still see another year of down on this or, or, or choppy down on this. Now, the question is how low do we go? The only thing I would say about Bitcoin is it is very meticulous about filling gaps. So if you go and look on this chart, you will see a lot of gaps a lot lower on Bitcoin. So uh, just uh, I'll okay. put it out there. Yeah, that sounds great. We'll be right back, folks, with Shane Mullion, wolftrader.com. 877-927-6648. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious tech either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Okay, folks, we're talking with Shane Smolian, TheWolfTrader.com. Shane, you want to tell the folks uh, how they can reach you? Sure. Uh, if you want to reach me, you can head over to our website here. Let's see if I can find this here. Here's a slide. Uh, you can reach, reach us at WolfTraderFutures.com, or you can contact me, Shane, at WolfTraderFutures.com. And uh, we also have a YouTube channel, so if you want to check that out, we have webinars weekly. We do one every week. We have a different topic every week. We've been talking about Bitcoin, which is why I have such an interest in Bitcoin right now. Uh, I'm starting to understand it a little bit better. Uh, I'm still not, I don't fully understand it, but I'm, I, it's starting to make a lot more sense to me now. Uh, and then uh, Twitter is at WolfTraderFUTU1. So, you know, one thing I would tell people is that um, 
if the S and P does get this big sell off here, and 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 we do start to show weakness, Bitcoin could just follow it down because you know liquidity is drying up. There's a fear trade out there, but that doesn't mean that Bitcoin is necessarily wrong for the long term. And so Bitcoin has a history of doing these boom bust cycles, and so Bitcoin has gone to shockingly low levels before and recovered. So just because if Bitcoin does fall uh, with the S and P, it could it could just be a collateral damage type of a, of a deal and it could ultimately come out in the long run so i would just put it out there okay that makes very good sense now uh do you, do you have the email for the folks and your website that they can go to repeat Absolutely. that please sure sure so wolftraderfutures.com is the website uh email is shane at wolftraderfutures.com and the uh, Twitter is at Wolftrader, F-U-T-U-1, and that's the free Twitter. And you can follow us there. We do post updates there. I also message subscribers there about things that are going on. And we have, like I said, we have every week I do a different topic on a webinar. We're still kind of okay. stuck on Bitcoin right now, but come, come and visit us. <laughs> we'll talk. A lot of people are. <laughs> yeah. Hey, definitely. Thanks for, thanks for coming with us, my friend. We'll have you on again soon and keep up the great work. We certainly appreciate it. Shane Smolian, folks, wolftrader.com. Thank you, Larry. Stay safe out there. We're going to take a little break, folks. And uh, when we get back, uh, what we're going to do tomorrow is to have none other than Tim Boss, Financial Cycles Weekly, as our guest. And on Friday, we have J.C. Parrots of All Star Charts. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's 